The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Since the beginning of our lockdown from this pandemic, I have been more aware of resources than I ever have before. The need for toilet paper, the limits on hand sanitizer, the way that Patrick reported to me that ideal market looked in the baking aisle for the first month. No flour, no yeast, no anything. And the church world, it's been trying to get our hands on an FM transmitter. And then, hallelujah, the all-in-one communion packets arrived just in time for drive-in worship today. Now, if you're in a generation that's older than me, you're welcome to text me and call me this week and say, I told you so. Because you have known that limits, that resources are finite and limited. And I have always lived in a world where there was absolutely more than enough. In fact, our family now has our own potlucks at home. You're welcome to steal this idea. We make sure that we try to eat everything we make. And on Sunday afternoons, often is when it is, we have our own potluck. We eat up all the little bits and bobs that we used to throw away. So when I heard this parable this week, for more than the 40th time, the first thing that I thought about that sower was, what a waste. Why in the world would Jesus be telling us a story about a sower that just three quarters of what they put out there never yields anything. So let's look at this together. Jesus says that a sower goes out to sow and the sower sows everywhere. The sower begins on the path, something that's never even been plowed, has no hope of any kind of penetration of seed into soil. And unsurprisingly, the birds come and eat it up. The sower continues to rocky ground, 
ground that has no depth of soil. And although the seed gets a little foothold, the second that the sun comes out, it is scorched. And since there is no root, it dies. In the third case, the sower seed, sows seeds among the thorny ground. And that seed makes it a little farther, a little higher, a little better. But then the thorns come and outcompete. And you know, I really like to think of it as bindweed. You get right to the point where you're gonna get flowers and it's choked out. Three quarters of the time, this sower is sowing seed onto soil that's never going to do anything. And the good news, as Jesus tells it, is that when it does reach good soil, when it reaches the rich, deep ground, it yields a hundredfold and sixtyfold and thirtyfold. So we're stuck with the sower. The sower who obviously didn't try to buy seeds this year when they're almost more precious than gold. <laughs> At least for our garden, that's true. What a waste. Why in the world would the sower do so much waste? Well, maybe there's three different details to consider. First of all, the yield. The sower gets one seed into good ground and it yields 30 and 60 and 100 fold. This is like cucumber yield. It's more like zucchini yield. You know how you plant two plants because you have to have two plants? And then you have way more zucchini than you could ever possibly want ever. And there used to be a joke in Pennsylvania that at this time of year, do not leave your car door unlocked. Because if you leave your car door unlocked, there's going to be zucchini in your front seat. And if one person got there, the second person will still put more zucchini in your front seat. This is the kind of yield that happens when the word hits good soil. So maybe it doesn't matter that the sower puts all this into inputs. The yield is enough that it doesn't really matter. In the end, they make what they need to make. In fact, they make way more than they could have ever expected. So who cares? The second thing to think about is that I think when we apply this parable of the sower to faith, we look at others and we start judging their ground. We judge that one and say, oh, they're stubborn. They're like the path. All the seed is going to bounce right off. I'm not going to waste my breath on them. We get to the rocky ground and say, yeah, that person gets really enthusiastic at the beginning, but you know, they always fall away. I'm not going to waste my breath on that rocky ground. We get to those friends who have different priorities than we have, who think different things are important than we think are important. We think to ourselves, oh, you know, whatever I say, it's just gonna go in one ear and go out the other. They are choked by thorns. I'm not gonna waste my breath. In the end, if that's how we're considering others, if we are being miserly with the love of God, if we're keeping it all to ourselves until we know for sure it's going to be received into good soil, we might as well build bigger grain silos to keep it in. Because we'll always find an excuse to keep it to ourselves if we look at others with the eyes of the world. It is only God who knows how those seeds will be received. And someone who is more wise than I reminded me this week, maybe something will happen. Maybe that path will turn into good soil. Maybe those thorns 
will be eradicated. Maybe someone will come and work and pick away those stones. The third thing I thought about as I considered this parable and the waste that the sower is willing to waste on us is that I have been every single one of those kinds of ground. I myself have been stubborn and closed my ears. I myself have been rocky ground, really enthusiastic, and then completely burnt out and ready to walk away. I too have been choked by the cares of the world and the lure of wealth. But I also can tell you I can tell you of the times when the word finally found good soil. When my enthusiasm overflowed and affected the next person who affected the next person. Where the love of God could be freely given because I was given that love first. I believe each of us are all kinds of ground. And the really good news here is that God never gives up. God has an inexhaustible storehouse of love and is willing to cast it out to us again and again and again and again and again. And sometimes, sometimes it finds good soil. Sometimes. We live and dwell and move and share in the unconditional love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the yield is more than we could ever possibly ask or imagine. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you never give up on us that you keep casting out your love through the word, knowing that it will not return to you empty. Work on us until we become good soil. And then so give us a harvest of love that is more than we could ever ask or imagine. Amen and amen.